Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props. In today's video, we're gonna be doing an unboxing, assembly, and doing some first prints and first looks at Creality's new Ender 3 V3 KE. That's a mouthful, we're just gonna probably call it the KE, but let's go ahead, get this thing unboxed, and start this video. Okay, so if you wanna see the unboxing, and the assembly, hang on, I'm gonna put that at the end. Now we're gonna take a look at the printer itself, talk about the tech specs, do some test prints, and get my overall feelings on the printer. Again, hang on to the end, you can go ahead and watch the assembly. Now Creality did send me this printer and a couple spools of Hyper PLA to take a look at and do this video on, uh, but the review of course is my own. I don't have to give the video to them. I don't have to seek approval. Like all of my videos, I am not paid to do the review. I might get the unit, but the review's my own. All right, so let's talk about this new Creality, the KE. I'm just gonna call it the KE. It's very long. I wish they would shorten their naming structure, but whatever, I mean, that's very, very petty. Again, this is the KE from Creality. And as you can see, I've been doing quite a bit of printing with it. There's actually a few more that I've already sanded and finished. Uh, they're drying right now or I would show them. But right off the bat, I've got to say, very impressed with the machine. I've had it now for a couple months. Uh, as you can see, I've run uh, a couple helmets. This is the one I haven't sanded yet, but this is a uh, dread helmet, so something like this can fit on this, uh, which is uh, 220 by 220 by 240. Masks you can use, of course. Uh, I printed a clock spring vase over there, and you can see this vase is just super clean. I mean, you know, A, it prints super fast with the clipper firmware, so it isn't full clipper, it's uh, Creality's version of clipper, so it's like a, a, a pared down clipper. Uh, but at the same time, it takes advantage of a lot of those tools that Clipper has to offer. And it is fast. And it is a pretty good uh, printer quality-wise, print quality-wise, with that speed. It is amazing that these slingers are getting so good with, uh, you know, the speeds they're reaching and the print quality. So let's take a look at a close-up at a few of these prints. Uh, this, of course, uh, like I just said, is a Dread helmet uh, that I'll be working on in future videos for my Dread cosplay. Uh, have not stopped with that, still working on it, and we have some more videos coming. Uh, again, really happy with the quality. Uh, it was printed pretty much just like this, putting manual supports around the edges and just a little bit up top to make sure it didn't fail up there. Uh, is it going to need sanding? Sure. I mean, if you want to make a glassy, smooth helmet like some of the ones I've made, uh, you can take a look at the playlist up here that shows you how I uh, go ahead and surface and finish helmets. Uh, you're going to do some sanding, but this is really clean and really goes a long way in me not having to do a ton of work. Same thing with this uh, Court of Owls mask. I'm a huge Batman fan, and I thought, you know, they sent me some white filament. I thought I'd go ahead and try it out, and I like it. I like the filament, I like the print, it's pretty clean. Again, some sanding to get it that nice glassy appearance. That's what you're gonna have to do with 3D printing if you want that. But at the same time, you could just wear this mask just like this, and that's what's really great about these printers nowadays that have such, such crisp quality and again if you need to slow it down to get an even better looking print do that i'm printing a helmet right now on another printer uh the the max actually the k1 max and i've slowed it down to 200 or 100 millimeters a second and uh you know it's going to take two days instead of maybe a day but I'm getting a cleaner line, and I'm not in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry with that project. So you could always slow your prints down. So really, really happy. I went ahead and used some of the, you know, the super fast uh, Creality uh, Hyper PLA that they sent me. And again, super clean Benchy. Now, it said it was going to run off at like 16 minutes, and I'm looking at my notes on the bottom of the Benchy, and it actually took 19, but still, 19 minutes for a Benchy with 
Really nice layer lines, uh, good overhangs. The detail is really sharp. It's a really, really clean benchy for 19 minutes. Uh, I was really, really surprised. And this comes right on the drive that you could print out. Now, let's talk about some of the details of the printer. Uh, first off, again, we did say that this is a uh, 220 by 220 by 240, but let's go in and look at some of the other components that really make this, you know, a pretty solid uh, printer in the Creality Ender V3 lineup. So build plate wise, it is a magnetic PEI coated spring steel sheet, and these are great. I mean, the PEI, the metal, it is the way to go. If a printer doesn't come with that anymore, I usually replace it, but most Decent printers now are coming with this, and I really love it. The one thing I also love about this is the same with the K1 Max, is the little divots in the back. So you can just slide this in, it hits those two little screws back there, and you know it's in place, it's a lot easier. Especially when you've got a magnetic plate, if it doesn't really catch right, it's a pain, you gotta keep lifting it off, put it back on. With those two little screws, you don't have to do that. Now the other nice thing about this printer is it's going the way of most printers with giving us automatic bed leveling. So we don't have the little wheels on the bottom. We've got a Creality BL touch there and it just goes ahead and levels itself. And I really like that because it takes a lot of the guesswork is how thick is the piece of paper and is this the right tension? And uh, I'm really liking that with printers nowadays. The bed will also do up to 100C, so it will work with things like ABS, PTG, and TPU. Of course, with some of those, you're gonna need an enclosure if you're gonna to wanna to print and get good results, but um, at least it will go that temperature and you can use those types of things if you have an enclosure. And if we head up to the extruder, this is a direct drive, which I'm loving. No more Bowden tubes, we get away from that. We can print ABS, we can print uh, TPUs, Ninja Flexes, things like that. And the max nozzle temperature for this is 300 C. Again, you need that kind of temperature for these more exotic filaments. And I have printed some TPU on this, I actually have it on a build right now that I don't have in front of me, but the TPU worked out really, really well. Now the unit itself is made with, uh, you know, sort of a combination of injected molded plastics, like the base and metal parts. It's actually using a new um, gantry and frame format here, which is a T-shaped aluminum extrusion. Now it's a little bit lighter. The uh, actual wheels, the actual guide wheels here on the sides, they fit into that space, I think, a little bit better too, because uh, it's a little bit wider and it fits the dimension of the wheel itself, so that's really interesting. So the machine itself just also feels very well put together, very precise, very sort of tight in its tolerances, where I think it really shines is on the bed. These rails, these dual rails, it just rides on this so smoothly and there is no play. I have seen some where there may be a little bit of play here and there, uh, maybe due to shipping, you might just have to go in there and adjust a few things, but absolutely nothing uh, on mine. Movement wise, smooth as glass. This is gonna help when you're cooking at the speeds that this thing will do. You really, really need a really well constructed machine. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the hot end itself, this has a 60 watt ceramic heater, which is gonna let this printer get up to max temperatures of 300 C. And with that all metal hot end extrusion, you are going to be able to print, again, these higher uh, temperature filters, uh, nylons, uh, uh, pet G's, ABS's. And I love that we're getting printers nowadays right off the bat that have got a direct drive, uh, all metal hot end and the ability to print out these more exotic filaments because it's fun to print something different sometimes than your standard PLA and you might need it for something if you're doing something along the lines of a mechanical device or a little robot that needs a really really strong filament like a PTG or a ABS. Now the KE did come released with clip uh, you know a 
version of Clipper. It's Creality sort of pared down version of Clipper uh, called Creality OS. And this is one of the things that allows us to get to those speeds of 500 millimeters a second. But Creality, of course, is saying probably the best would be to keep it around 300 millimeters a second, which is still pretty darn fast. Couple that with their Hyper PLA, you can squeeze a little bit more speed out of it. Now, because this also has this pared down version of Clipper or Creality OS, it does utilize input shaping, which is that thing if you've got a, a Max or a K1 or a K1C, where it sort of does that shaking and moving things around. And it's saying, let me look at the frequency of this vibration and then know how to counteract it. I'm not a scientist. That's layman's terms that I understand it to sort of, help, again, help with a clean print. Now, unfortunately, the printer doesn't come with the module needed for the firmware to really, you know, do proper input shaping. It's just going off a sort of generic setting that was preset. If you want to get true input shaping, you need to purchase the little module from Creality. And I am going to, I think, pick that up to see if there is a major difference in the prints. And then I'll do a video on that. That being said, I really, really like this printer. Uh, I've printed out a number of things. Uh, this helmet, let's see, nice fit there. I just bonked myself in the head. Right? Masks, vases. These are actually some planters. I'm looking at maybe doing some succulent planters uh, over on my um, website, 3D Printer Props, where you can pick up all of these files, except for, of course, the vase that's clock springs. Um, but you can pick up all these other things over on 3dprinterprops.com. Coupon below. Uh, and I have not had any problems. The one time I had a problem, is the times I always have problems with 3D printers. I slice it, but I slice it to the wrong filament, which I did. I put some PTG in and I had it set to PLA. And as you can probably guess, things did not go well. So that was my fault. That was not their fault. Um, other than that, I've just been kicking prints on it. It's like my K1 Max. Uh, it just prints right out of the box, like most modern printers now. Now the printer itself is coming in at $300. Now, if you're interested in picking up your own KE, you can find the link below. All the links below are affiliate links. If you buy anything from them, I get a couple dollars and I use those couple dollars to buy more filament or paint or stuff like that. Uh, so if you're interested, click on those below. So this is one of my new in rotation printers that I just sort of load stuff on when I'm uh, printing away on different projects. My K1 Max is usually full. It's being printed on constantly. It's being printed on right now. So this is the other smaller printer that I pretty much use now to kick off prints pretty fast with a really good quality. And, you know, as you'll see, if you hang on for a second, if you want to watch it, it took no time to put together. Even if you've never put a 3D printer together, uh, if you're not trying to film it and move the camera around, you could have this thing put together 15 minutes. I, I think it's got four screws at maybe six or eight screws. So it's really fast. So if you're interested, go ahead, hang on, watch. I'm going to unbox it, put it together, tell you everything you get. Uh, if you're done, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. But if not, hang on, let's go ahead and put this guy together. Okay. So first off, we're just going to cut this sucker open. And what I love about printers nowadays compared to the first Creality CR10 that I bought is they are mostly put together. We've got instruction, we've got a bag of goodies with clippers and all those types of things. Very small amount of filament. Uh, I don't know why they bother to send it, but I guess if you didn't have any, then you would need it. We're going to take off our second layer with our gantry here. So this is again, fully assembled. And again, I am loving that. It's very light, uh, very well constructed. We've got aluminum. And here we go with our base. Now remember to take off the foam that's underneath the bed uh, and get ready to put the gantry on. Now you can see on the right hand side, if the unit's facing you, there's a little hole there. And there's a cable on the gantry for the motor that you will slip through that hole and set your gantry down. Now make sure that wire is not being, you know, clipped or not being uh, pinched at all. And then you're just going to go ahead and put in your screws and connect 
that cable that you fed through the bottom. If you're gonna flip the unit over, rinse and repeat. There's no cable on this side, of course, but you've gotta put all your screws in and make sure they are nice and tight. We put a couple more screws in on the thread here for the motor. We attach the cable to our screen. I like to do that ahead of time. And we put the three screws in to attach the screen. We then go ahead and attach the filament spool holder and attach the filament runout sensor. And yes, those are supposed to move. Don't worry about that. And now we're going to put the main cable back in. I like that they've got like a really sturdy metal uh, cable uh, holder here to make sure that the cable doesn't fall off or get in the way. We connect the top motor and we slide on down and we connect the motor at the base of the unit to make sure, of course, if we don't, it's not going to work. So make sure you connect those. We connect the main cable to the top and go ahead and pinch that together so they're in place. And then you can use this little clip and you're going to screw it into the top part here. Now, I couldn't get in there, so I'm going to do this off camera, but that's where it goes. Peel off the protective screen and do not forget to change your voltage. It is in the back. Use one of the Allen wrenches they give you and then you can switch it over. We're going to put the spool holder on and there it is. Nice and compact, very sturdy and ready to print. Crazy fast how you can put these, these things together now. It is just so surprising. You're going to walk through the steps, put in your... Uh, Wi-Fi, select your time zone if you want, and then go ahead and do the, the detection and the calibration. Uh, it goes through and does all the steps to make sure everything's working properly. You go ahead and pop your spool on. This is the Hyper Series, and feed it through the filament runoff sensor down to the main unit here. Again, this is direct drive. Put it in place. Bring it all the way to the bottom where you feel a little resistance. And I like to extrude first off because you can see it's white, right? That's because they ran a little bit through there at first at the factory. And now we can see that the orange is coming through and everything's great. I'm going ahead and printing this Benchy. I'm going to hit print. And again, no, it is not this fast. That would be... <laughs> Maybe in the future, but not right now. But again, super happy with how this Benchy turned out and I'm just really digging this printer. All right, everybody. Thanks for making it to the end and watching the assembly. As you can see, it was super duper easy. I'm actually going to take this now from the studio area, move it behind the fake wall, plug it in and print a few more helmets on it because I've got a helmet series I'm working on and different ways to finish helmets. Uh, that I've sort of gleaned from other YouTubers online and ways that people have said, why don't you do it this way or why don't you do it that way? So I've made a list and I'm actually printing off like six helmets and over the course of months, I will be doing more videos on how to finish these helmets in different ways. If there's a way that you'd like to see how to finish a helmet, like you've heard a specific way this is done or that's done, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll try that out. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.